So here's an alternative method that I use, Mohawk Epoxy Putty, and I use it on the high spots, and then I get it like paper thin with a razor blade, using a razor blade as a scraper. And then I put it in and I check it again, and usually I just have to do a couple uh, scuff sandings with some like 150 sandpaper. And it just seems to be a lot quicker for me. Uh, take, you know, uh, filling in the high spot rather than always sanding on the low spots. And then you can see down here, I did the same thing on the back. There was a spot right there that I put some epoxy on. So we'll let that um, cure. Just enough time for me to go take a coffee break. And when I come back, I'll be able to sand it. So here's another reason I really like this method is when you sand across it, You can see the low spots and the high spots. So once I get that nice and even, I'll put it in the piano and give it a try. Okay, let's give it a try. Let me get that chalk mark out of there. Right here. here all right I got it smaller so it looks like I was a little overzealous and sanding between here so I'm just gonna add a little more I'll smooth it out with the blade all right that looks good Yeah, I'm going to try not to take so much off this time. Alright, let's see how that feels. Alright, got it back in. Oh yeah, perfect all the way across. That took less than five minutes of time. Okay, I had put some right in here. That was the high spot here. That's good. Uh, still a little right here. Uh, that's good over there. About, about right there. All right, fixing this back high spot. I just want to get it paper thin. Just coming up a little bit. Smooth it out with the razor blade. And when that cures, I'll just give it a light sanding and try it out. It's interesting that the spot that I had to fix, this is on the front part, it looks like there was some water or some kind of fluid dropped on that location and created a mismatch on the front rail. All right, check in the back. Ah, all gone, perfect. All right, now the front and back's done. Now time for balance rail. All right, here's the newspaper method. Oh, there we go, we're starting to touch now. Right there. Yeah, uh, Yeah, right there. 
Okay, here's the dial method. See if I push down, you can see which way the dial wants to go. All right, so let's turn it so it just touches. Right there. If I turn it back, so that's the natural position above. So let's just, right there's where it's touching. All right. So doing another one. Push down, wants to go to the right, so we're just waiting for me to turn the glide bolt until it wants to go the other direction. Probably any time now, just loosened up. Right there. Off just where it touches right there all right you can see my setup for the dial indicator I've got some boards so I don't dent or scratch anything and a clamp that holds my dial indicator up against the pin block then I use these two pieces of wood on the balance rail and a wedge to bridge that gap right there. Get the dial where I want it. About there.